ballistic missile, the most accurate weapon of mass destruction. Soaring above Earth's atmosphere, some 700,000 feet up, these vestiges of the Cold War are able to deliver nuclear warheads thousands of miles away with pinpoint accuracy. They are ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, capable of delivering Armageddon with the flick of a switch. They have created a paranoid new world since their introduction in the late 1950s. What we realized was our two great oceans will no longer protect us from invasion or military disaster. They can now reach us, and they can reach us very quickly and very easily. That's what made them so dangerous. By definition, an intercontinental missile must have a range greater than 3,000 miles, the minimum distance needed to reach Europe or Asia from a launch point in North America. The first of these missiles to appear was America's Atlas in 1959, followed quickly by the Titan I, which had a range of 5,500 miles and carried a single nuclear warhead. But they've gotten much, much deadlier. The most current ICBM, called the Peacekeeper, costs $65 million each, weighs nearly 200,000 pounds, and can carry 10 separate warheads, each of which are far more destructive than the old Titan warhead. En route to its target, each ICBM passes through three stages, boost phase, ballistic phase, and re-entry phase. Once launched, targeting cannot be changed, nor can strategic missiles be recalled or destroyed in flight. With ballistic missiles, once you push the button, and they take off, you can't bring them back. They're gone. And they're going to hit a target in 30 minutes, sometimes less time than that, depending upon how far away they are. After traveling up to 7,000 miles, the missiles use sophisticated gyroscope and optical guidance systems to hit their targets. They have accuracies measured in hundreds of feet. At the height of the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union collectively had over 17,000 nuclear warheads sitting atop ICBMs. An explosive force comparable to the destruction of Hiroshima once a day, every day, for over 500 years. Ironically, ICBMs were developed under the guise of defensive, not offensive, purposes. So far, the threats of using them has proven so powerful that we've managed to avoid global annihilation from the most accurate weapon of mass destruction. At the end of the Cold War, the United States and Russia began dismantling their nuclear arsenals. Still, in the year 2000, our two countries had over 1,300 ICBMs with more than 3,500 nuclear warheads. Daunting figures, which surely no one foresaw in 1926 with the first launching of the liquid-fueled rocket 